Well, the world is ending. Two halves, slowly drifting apart. It's a cinematic way to end everything we know. Of course, gravity would prevent anything like a clean cut from actually happening, but it is a striking image. Envision how this might happen. Everyone's got a different approach. Maybe a godly samurai is testing out his newly forged katana, steel folded one billion times. Perhaps an alien race decides they want to put their huge laser weapon to work. Or it could even be another asteroid, one way bigger and more precise than the one that took out the dinosaurs. It's the stuff of sci-fi legend, but we are going to try to get to the bottom of it today. Hello fellow friends and philosophers, and welcome back to the most mind-bending channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your voice in the void, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be asking the question, what if the Earth was cut in half? Crazy, I know. If planetary problems like this pique your interest, make sure to check out our biggest science questions playlist, which should pop up on your screen right now. Alright, let's get down to business. We should probably begin by saying that the likelihood of the Earth being cut in half is astronomically low. There are no implements in existence, at least that we know of, that are capable of slicing a planet clean in two. Even if someone developed a gigantic blade that could potentially saw through the Earth if given enough time, it would reach a point where cutting no longer works. There's more water on the surface of the Earth than anything else, and once you get to the core, you're dealing with temperatures so extreme that any tools you brought down with you would likely cease to work. Tough break, I know. But yeah, there really is no way to realistically model how the Earth might actually be cut in half. So we'll have to go into the realm of the hypothetical to find some answers on this particular question. And what better place to start than with a cheesy 60s disaster movie? One can only hope that the world ends thanks to some harebrained scheme cobbled together by hubris-fueled scientists. In the 1965 flick Crack in the World, we find out that decades of underground nuclear tests have potentially weakened the crust of the Earth. A crack team of scientists Huh? are attempting to harness Earth's geothermal energy by drilling deep down into its core. During these experiments, they come across an unfortunate barrier, a crazy dense layer of material. The project lead, a desperate man secretly dying of cancer, decides that it's time to blast it with an atomic device. And guess what? This detonation causes the crust to crack along a fault line. All sorts of earthquakes and tidal waves ravage the Earth, and the scientists try to figure out if the crack will make it beyond the fault. If this were the case, the crack could make it all the way around the Earth's perimeter, causing land masses to split. And if that happened, oceans would then be sucked in, and enough steam to tear apart the Earth would be generated. Dramatic, right? It's not very likely that this would be the case, but hey, it's a fun place to start. Plus, at the end of a crack in the world, a gigantic piece of the planet is broken off and forms a new moon. Why kid? Now that we've put the Hollywood version out there, let's consider a few other ways this could go down. What if suddenly, for no good reason, the Earth split in two? Like maybe the samurai I mentioned earlier decided it really was time to slice and dice. What then? A clean cut down the middle with the two halves existing independently for a moment. Well, if that did happen, it's likely they'd just come crashing back together. Gravity would essentially prevent them from floating too far in any direction, so we'd still have an Earth, albeit one with a big ol' scar down the middle. Oh, and the results on the surface would be nothing short of catastrophic. Two bodies of that size colliding would cause a lot of issues. Think about it. Even from very close, the immense weight of the Earth running into itself would send shockwaves around the globe. Earthquakes and tidal waves would rock our world, and they wouldn't stop for a long time. Something like this might not end all life on Earth, but it would kill a whole lot of people and destroy pretty much everything. Cutting the Earth in half like that and letting the halves come back together would basically be a hard reset for surface dwellers. Another potential option would be to take the two halves and move them a significant distance apart. In in this case, each half would become its own little planet. Two tiny spherical Earths, each spilling molten core out into space for a little bit. Doesn't that sound like fun? Eventually, they would reach some sort of equilibrium and begin orbiting in a binary system of sorts. Each would rotate around the center of mass, which would be the center of the two halves. Probably. I'm no scientist. Oh, and the moon would likely fly off into space without one single Earth to orbit. It'd probably end up colliding with another celestial body at some point. Damn, I'm gonna miss the moon. Speaking of missing stuff, I'm also going to miss life as we know it. A cataclysmic event like the Earth splitting in two won't allow for us to return to normal life. Now, even if people survive, they're going to have a rough go. If people survive. But in the event that folks are still around, we're going to be living two different existences on two different planetary bodies. Trade routes? Out the window. Families? Forever divided. Satellite broadcasts and internet connectivity? Forget about it. In fact, the splitting and reorganizing of landmass will provide a brand new world for everyone. Well, some of the exposed molten core will have to cool on the surface, creating new land. Whether any of it will be useful or even survivable is up in the air. 
Probably not, but hey, it's always nice to have hope. In the end, if the Earth was cut in half, we'd have one hell of a conversation topic. How did this happen? Who was that samurai? Did aliens make first contact? Do you think that tidal wave will crush me and my home? Oh, it'll be a fun time. If we do survive, there will be plenty of adjusting to do. Figuring out if you're on planet A or planet B, followed by a total reorganization of pretty much everything, should be a blast. Scientists would set out to figure out exactly how this happened, and then get into the nitty gritty of the physical implications of such an event. And of course, the economy would take a phenomenal hit. That seems to be the main concern for a whole lot of folks, but what can you do? Well, that just about sums up the Earth slicing idea. There is a lot more to consider if you want to explore a lot of the deeper implications, but I'll keep it light for today. What'd you think of the video? How would you react if the Earth became two? Would any of what I just outlined actually happen? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more ideological ones from the top 10 Donald Trump freakouts. Country Drawer says, don't worry guys, Annabelle is finding his room. Give her a little bit more time. Wait, Annabelle's on the loose? Well, that's bad news on its own. JP says, we have better things to talk about. I know people disagree, but so be it. Who is we? Like the universal we? We as in you and your pals? I'm confused. Colors of Nigeria says always baffled the way the media just can't get enough about Trump. It's just so hilarious. America might never have a president like him again. I love him. He's always good for a headline, that's for sure. Green Polo Boy 3 says in four years time you might be doing another one of these. Well, we'll see if this stuff is still trending by then. Heck, maybe even YouTube will get replaced by an even wilder app. Only time will tell. And Ariana Grande says, If I can, I would pay somebody to make artificial intelligence app to work like a video game free app to hack into military air drone to kill Donald Trump and a person who controller a drone can think it a video game and not real life. Ariana, are you sure you should be saying that publicly? Don't you think it could negatively affect your career as a pop star? And that's all the time we have for today. Before I become a large cup of coffee, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more quantum quandaries. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.